Hey everybody, it's Kate Quinn. Welcome to So Steady Facebook Live on Sundays with me. And I have some fun ideas that I want to share for today. We'll also use this as an opportunity to just review basics. Um, the design isn't that complicated, but it does have always the beginning features and then something a little more challenging, something a little bit more challenging. So each time it's going to advance and add a little bit of a layer of difficulty. Let me show you kind of where we're going. I have a partial working sample. So let me show you. Okay, let's see if we can get our camera in just a little bit closer so it's a little bit more on top of the design. How's that? Is that a little bit better? If you can hear me, you can see well. Can you go ahead and just let me know? so that I can make sure the sound is working the way we want it to. This space out here is an eight inch square and it is on point. So this would be a suitable design to use for an eight inch square. This interior box right here is a six inch square. So if you have a six inch and you want to have a little sashing, you could also use it for that. There is a way that we'll talk about where you could extend this element out and make it longer. But right now it is approximately in line with the circle, not perfectly, but close. So if you extend the corner, then these will have a bigger gap between where the block would lie. Okay, and we'll explain a little bit more about that. I'll be referring back to this visual sample a few times. But this is also about how do you map a design and how do you decide where are you gonna start so that you can have the least amount of thread breaks and build the design and have it still look good. Okay, all right, so let's start. The very first piece for today is I have my glider on. Let's see if we can put a different angle. That seems very, very funny angle and I'm going to just move it back just slightly so we have a little bit more room. A little bit more room for me to sew. I can't have it. So it looks like uh, annoying Facebook gods are snapping at me telling me that my signal is bad. I'm just going to keep going the best I can and if you hear you know no sound or blackout it might be that it's just trying to reconnect for a second. I'm just gonna go with it because that seems like it's been a problem with them lately. Okay, <laughs> the Cowboys. All right, so the first thing we wanna do is we wanna put in our, our square, which will be our eight inch square. So basically, you know, if I have a block that is pieced, I already have that, I don't need any help. But just for this, purposes right now, I'm going to go ahead and just mark it by just folding it. This particular cloth that we're working with is about a 15 inch piece, give or take. Um, and I'm just randomly folding this, trying to find the middle. It, I don't even know that this is all squared up, but at least it will give me a reasonable center point to work with. And then I'll use the crosshair square and kind of line that up. So right there, that's where we're going to mark our center point, and let's put that crosshair square on. If I can find it, where'd it go? Hmm. There he is. I knew I just had him, he was hiding. All right, we'll have to kind of work around this surface up here, so I'm just gonna adjust it. So it's approximately squared up to this, give or take. So let's just mark these, the straight line and the plus. Those are our first markings that we're going to do. And let's see. Let's see if I can come out a bit more. I need to give you guys a little bit more visibility here of what we're doing. All right, this camera has its, a mind of its own because it's very smart. But uh, I think this will be better for us. All right, Barbara Robeson. Hi from SoCal, I can't wait to go. <laughs> I'm leaving next Friday and I'm packing my brains out. I've been really working to get everything sorted so that I'm ready to go. 
All right, so I lay the pen in here. This one has kind of a long chalk. I've, I've brought it out quite a bit because it is skinny and that will help us get these lines in. So just initially right now, I'm gonna put a little mark. This has um, got some eight inch markings, so I could extend the line to the eight inch mark, but it's just a little, I think, complicated to see. And in case we need the centering marks later, I'm just gonna make them a little bit longer. Okay, let's mark that eight inch square. So I'm just using my squaring ruler, and if I put it like this, with the four right there, oh, it's not long enough, darn it. Let me just make this a little bit longer and more visible. All right, so put this centered on the floor like this. Half of the design will be on each side. So I've got this line centered and the eight is on this line here. So right there, that's eight. And then this is right on this diagonal here. So let's make sure I didn't bump it. So we have the two reference lines that we're using. Oh, my machine went to sleep and it turned off the light. All right, and so that's the first part, and then I'm just gonna flip it around and do the same thing, and I'll use that full eight inch square. So if, if this was something that was pieced in, like square and a square, or something like that, this is how you could mark for that eight inch. This four is right in the center using this diagonal, and I've got the eight on this side and the eight on this side right on that line, and that's how I know that my line is gonna be good. You get just a small adjustment there, make sure it's straight. Okay, so these rulers can be very helpful. They can help us easily make that square if we're trying to work inside a pieced area. Okay, all right, and so that's our block that we're starting with. And from this center position, I'm gonna use Donnell's ruler because it's awesome. To make the initial marks. Now, I want to have a two inch square centered right on there. So I'm going to use the middle line and just line the center up on one of the reference lines. Make sure they're nice and straight. And I'm just going to go like this. Okay. And without moving it, I'm just going to do the other side. Make sure my chalk is giving me a good mark. Okay, so this is two inches wide and we want the same this way. So align it right on the center. The reason I wanna do it this way and use the same ruler and both sides is this is really gonna help give us that accurate two inch box in the center rather than you know making a line this way, that way, you know, like this, making a line to this side and then to this side. These are all made with the ruler not moving. So this is probably a pretty accurate two inch square that we're getting and we have our center mark as well. I am gonna go ahead and highlight this center mark right here. It's not very, very deep right there. I can't really see it. I need to be able to see that. So each one of these corners is gonna be the center of the circle and the reason that we extended these lines is because they're gonna make it really easy to align the circle on this plus because it's big enough that we can see well. All right, so this is the alignment, okay? Right here, right here, right here, all of those lines. If you have one that has a little bit less visibility because of the tape, I usually put it in my like least important quadrant. So here I can see, I can see, I can see. When I sew the first circle, we're trying to make the circles touch each other. They're gonna touch here, so this one will go, and then one here, this one will touch the one below, and then the one in these quadrants will both touch. So it's four circles all touching one another. So from the center of the circle to the outside is one inch, right? So if this is the center, then this is R, the radius. And that way I know that all these circles can touch if I have this two inch. 
I was looking for a simple way to get the right arrangement and to have good alignment marks so that we could easily make this design. I don't want the circles to be misaligned. I want them to touch. When I put the ruler on, I want somewhere to align. So this is a good way. It's basically just a two inch circle. And I just used that simple ruler to make those alignments. Hey Jake, go get my computer so I can see the comments. Are you recording? Yes. <laughs> So my son is visiting from Buffalo. So he is doing his military break before he uh, goes to training and is going to deploy as well. And uh, he's using the sewing room as his bedroom. So he, he just walked in and said, hey mom, are you taping? Yes, I am. So let's get it aligned and let's start sewing. Okay. All right, so I've got it aligned. I want to start with the foot right in this position right here. We're going to sew around the circle, and we're going to sew back. Notice that I've got four quadrants, and I'm going to put the um, my fingers on the staple tapes right here. So as I sew all the way around the circle, then in order to travel to the next circle, I'm going to come down to this position. And the way that we'll do that, that means that this part on each circle will have that same double stitching. So it'll look really symmetrical because it will be the same. Okay. All right. Let's get started. Let's get us in here. I think we're all threaded up and everything. One of the things I like about this machine is I have this handy little finger space right here. Let me show you. Okay. Daddy, I'm on. You guys need to be quiet. Okay. All right, so here we go. Oh, let's get this up. A little bit longer bobbin thread will definitely help us. All right, let's get us lined back up and we'll pick up that thread. I want to get it right in there, so I'll get that intersection first. You can take this thread and you can thread it underneath there just like this. All right. Now that we've got the bobbin thread up and our thread in place, I'm going to position the needle right exactly at that intersection where it should be. Once it's aligned, I'm going to go ahead and get these threads out of the way. Make sure that they're back behind there. We don't need them impeding our progress. Now that the foot is set into position, I can easily get everybody aligned. So as we said, let's sew the circle, start the gas, and then we'll go around. Oh, these threads are caught somehow, so I'm just going to move them. We'll cut these in just a minute. As soon as we stitch over them, I'll go ahead and cut those, get them out of our way. All right, so here's our circle. Notice that I'm activating the grips in the four corners, right? And we'll sew over and back around to the bottom. Here I have an obvious, clear visual alignment. So let's bring you in just a little bit closer so you can see that. Can you see that at the bottom of the circle line? I'm using that as the visual mark so that right when I'm in that position, I know to stop right there. The needle will be lined up there. Okay, let's get these threads out. Since they are now secure, they don't need to be in our way. That'll just help keep them out of our way for the rest of the project. We won't have to keep moving things out of the way. Move this down, you have a straight line here, and you have that two inch line right down here to line everything up. So I'm just gonna double check, make sure your back is aligned as well. And if you're not sure if this is a quarter inch, then this is a good opportunity for you to check that with your spacing gauge. Now, remember what we said, we wanna go the circle all the way around, okay? So we'll get the circle all the way in. And we'll sew again that inner portion right there and stop right on the center line, right on that position. Moving over, I like to make the tape be in the, like the least important alignment spot. One, 
two, and three, I can clearly see those visibilities. And I'm gonna go ahead and make that circle. Okay, and sew over. What's so important when you're doing a little bit of overstitching like this right here, making sure that you hold the ruler steady until you're done. Don't go around the circle one time and get back here and be like, oh, oh, I'm done. No, you're not. Keep holding everything in place until you get to your transition place. Okay, so at this point, I would just move this up. I've again got all these same alignments, checking all my lines, and now I can sew this last one. So here we go. And we'll sew that last one again right here and coming up all right i'm going to go ahead and take the circle off now i've orchestrated this design in a way where we have fewer starts and stops fewer cutting i could cut my thread right at this minute if i wanted to i could be done with this portion right here we've got our cute little squares inside so let's get closer so you can see a little bit better and we'll kind of come out just a little bit. All right, so can you see the design pretty well? Let's get some light on there too so we can get a little shadow. There is this white marked line that goes to the center of each of these circles now. I can sew that or I can use it for something else. I could literally come around and sew this line and use it to travel to finish each of these little quadrant marks right here. The first thing that I wanna do is, let's go ahead and mark in where our points are gonna be for the six inch, because we said that it would be a six inch. So if this is an eight inch, if we take one inch off of each side and put just a little cross mark right there like this and like this, this is where we should extend our design, our little leaf design into these corners. Okay, so I just wanna know where that is. So I'm gonna mark these really quickly. From this position, I'm just gonna rotate this really quick so I can get the other sides. I do think that marking is very powerful. It's giving us information about how big we want a template to fit in this little space right here. Oh, I just, I can't get that line in there. Let's do it this way. Okay, one more. I think we have one more mark right there. Could I make something that, that fits from here all the way out to this corner? I can. I'm choosing not to because I played with this design and when my design kind of aligns right at this point, it makes a nice square that gives just a little breathing room for the circles. The original design that inspired this actually has the circles touching the line. But what I found is for us, the level of accuracy that that would require is too intense and too frustrating and I don't wanna do it. So I've adapted the design to give us a little bit of flexibility. By having this out to the six mark, these designs basically are going to fit in at about five and a half. We're gonna to align to this point and the design will sew in a quarter inch from that space. So each of these corners, this is the alignment mark and the foot will then sew a quarter inch away from that space. Because I want to embellish this design in the center a little bit, what I thought is I think that we can use these spaces here and we can travel around with one of our tools and put a fun echo in here. So that's our next task. <coughs> I can use different size circles. This circle is the two inch circle. This is available in the simple circle number one set or it's also available in the sampler set. The next tool that I'm gonna use, I want a smaller circle that can echo inside of this. <coughs> These two units 
This is the one and a half inch back to back set. So it's a set that I use a lot. I really like it. And this arc right here, this top part and this bottom part, this is the inside and outside one and a half inch clamshell basically. So it's half of a circle one way and half the other. And I'm gonna show you how we can use this super easily to align for the next part of this um, task. So for your information, this is the back-to-back -back one and a half dash two. You can just purchase this by itself or the set. The set is only $36 regular price, really great value. So I think it's worth getting both of them. Okay, here we go. So we are already on this straight line, right? We're already on this interior two inch square. So just to move through the design, if I need a straight edge, I want to use these lines that are already on here, like this line right here. This center line is aligned right on it. And the purpose of that is to keep this square. So what I want to do is just sew out a very small amount. And I'm a slight bit away from my line, so I'm going to just take one more stitch. Okay, so I'm right on this line right there. And I'm just going to sew enough to get the foot to touch behind. So it's a quarter of an inch. I am looking for the very edge of the back of this foot to touch this circle. So when I sewed on my little two inch box, it's only about three stitches, a very small amount. Okay, what am I going to do now? Right? I'm touching right here and I want to echo this cool rounded diamond. Let me show you. Right here, right at this center position, that is a piece of a circle. If I align it right on that little one inch plus, notice that right here I have a half inch space. And that is the exact space that the foot requires and the needle would sew in the middle. So here we go. Okay. The chalk line is the guideline. I'm stopping on the chalk. Now, again, I can use any straight edge. I can use the straight line right there and my spacing gauge, and I just want to sew down enough so that my foot is on the inside of this other circle. So a few more stitches, not three that time, because we have to cross from this side and then come over. I think that's pretty close. I'm gonna leave it right there. We'll check that when we start doing the circle. Again, the plus right here, I'm gonna align it right there. I could also line it up this way, like this, but I feel like the visibility for me is a little better by putting this part on it. Both of these will work either direction. However, I like the visibility on this side, holding it this way and being able to physically see the half inch. So. There's no rule about which side that you need to use. You use whatever side that you want, right? You're in charge. So we'll get to the chalk line, okay? And then we need to sew across. So just so you can see that alignment, I've got this lined up here, and I've got the line right in the middle on the back. It's parallel. And I'm just gonna sew across until the foot is touching. So visibility is key right here to seeing that the foot is touching the circle. Okay, now, same thing. I'll show you from this angle. We'll align it right there. We're on the plus right there, and we're gonna sew until we get the needle to this other chalk line down on the bottom. So I'm activating these grips, and here we go. Kind of looking back, trying to keep the needle right in line, and then we can sew again straight. I'm touching the edge of the circle right there. And we'll go from this side because we want to be able to sew forward. So we need a good visibility. So I can see everything and this will get me right to that same position up at the top right there. Now, we've sewn this awesome diamond in here. I love how that looks. Can you guys see that really good? Does that look so pretty? And it adds an air of three-dimensionality right here. 
I'm going to close this with my straight edge and we'll be in this position. And then we're going to talk about how do we add the little elements that go in here. Okay. Now I could do this with any, any size um, echo that I wanted. If I wanted a half inch, I would just sew a little bit further and then I would use a one inch circle. A one inch circle will be half of an inch between the circle because you'll get a half inch on this side and a half inch on this side. With the one and a half, I'm just getting the quarter inch echo right there. Okay, all right, let's close this up. Okay. All right, now I want to make some additional marks. This right here is one inch away from the center line and I want to make a mark a half of an inch away such that I would have a three inch box one and a half on this side and one and a half so I'm just going to use these and mark some additional lines and you'll see why that's important here in just a moment could I have made these lines before before now Yes, I could have. I didn't want to put a bazillion lines on here and have you be like, oh, I can't find anything, right? So we're kind of done with these lines. We'll still need these intersections, but we're, we're basically done with these. But we want to make a little bit of a bigger line for something that we have going on right now. So let's see if we can do it. Square it up. Use as many of the squared up reference lines as you can, okay? So we're gonna just mark that right here. We don't need it outside the circles. The box is actually going to be within the circle, okay? So this is that three inch boundary. I don't know if I can fit this in here. Let's see. Hmm. Oh, I'm just gonna cut it. Let's tack it and that'll make it easier. I wanted to show you how we could just creep up from there, but I'll show you that later on anyway, because we can. We can absolutely do that, but it's gonna be a lot easier to mark this if we just get this out here. Oh, don't be afraid to cut it. It's fine, no big deal. Nobody's gonna care or notice for that matter. Okay, so let's mark our three inch. You can see that's what we've got so far, and now we're gonna mark, instead of this two inch box, we're going to mark a three inch box. It's very linty. There's fluff everywhere in the air. All right, using all of those lines that we have. Let me see if we can tip this down a little bit while we mark. And I'm going to make it a little bit smaller too, so you can see better. We've taken the original line right here and we're just going to extend it a half of an inch, which will make our box that three inch space. So we're just marking inside the circle. And we'll do that for each one of those lines that was one inch away from the center. Okay, and what we're looking for, we're looking for this, this corner, this corner, it's about one quarter of an inch away from the circle. Imagine that. And we're gonna be using that knowledge in just a few minutes to help our design get built. I didn't magically know that that's the distance or anything like that. I, I used some information that I was playing with and as I was drawing and testing things out, that's how I figured this out. So there's no magic to this. What I did is I want to go ahead and use this echo again. So I wanted to see what I could put in here as a reference line so that when I put these little corners in, we can echo this way and we know where to stop and come back in so we can travel around. Okay. All right, here we go. Because I want to show you how to travel from this position, if we were in this, I'm gonna stitch back up to here, okay? I'm gonna put my design in, and then we'll start going around. So this will be two different pieces of designing, and they'll all work at the same time. There'll be switching of templates in between. 
So I'm going to get my needle right in that position. Okay. And I'll just put a tacking stitch or two just in case so that when we come around, we won't have any loose threads. So I'm going to come up on this side. I'm going to sew around that way. Okay. So that decides which side that I'm going to go up to. All right. So let's go ahead. We'll come up to that marking position on the circle right there. This three inch line, that's where my needle is. It's touching the circle and it's on this white chalk line right there. Okay. Let's get you guys in a little tighter so you can see better. Okay. Do you see that? So this line comes over, it intersects the needles right there and I'm on the circle. And now I'm ready to put my template on. So let me grab the one that I want to use. This is the one that I'm using. This is the Grand Leaf four and a half. So I'm going to go ahead and take the tape off for the moment. And I'm actually going to leave the tape all the way off and I'll show you why. Just going to make it easier for us to move, but I'll keep it handy because we'll need it in a minute. When I line up, I am aligning on this dot with the pin and this bottom line. Mine has two lines. I'm not sure why, but I think the revamp might not have that. But I'm using the line that's aligned with the pinhole. But I'm not using the pin. I'm just using this as the alignment reference. And then we'll be using this top as the alignment. Okay, so let me show you. We'll put it on. And I'm just going to set this key on here. I don't need to worry about taping it because the ruler and the foot are not actually going to touch each other. Once I line this up, the foot is already further away from that plastic key in the back. So all I'm using the key for is to line up the reference lines over here and just make sure that we're centered. But he's not actually going to be touching that. Do you see that? Like the foot's out in front of it already. So he even if he moves around it doesn't matter so let's start sewing this is the grand leaf the four and a half inch so as you're coming around just has some of these outside corners so don't race around just go nice and gentle okay keep the edge of the foot right in line with the template and then we'll come back over to this other side now ideally we should align right on the same line that half inch line, that's where we should hit. But if we don't, that's okay. We can just take one or two stitches on the circle to get to that position because there's a really easy way to connect. Now, we're using the same technique that we did before, but we're going to sew out on this line straight in order to get our foot a quarter inch away. So let's just put the straight edge behind to show you what I mean. By traveling on the square, what we're doing is we're keeping the same relationship for each one of these, right? So I'm gonna sew right here until my foot is touching the circle. So that's how we get back to the circle. We're gonna travel around. Let's go ahead and put that one inch on there again let me show you we might have to move it because we are traveling further this time than we did on the last time okay so i'm going to go to the other quarter notice that we have that half inch right so the foot continues to touch perfectly right there is an easy alignment position and i need to change mine so i'm going to use that same position right there and get me back to my square chalk line. So I'm gonna travel until I hit that three inch box line, right? So we went down and we went around to the box line. This is the line right here, and my needle is right in the line. And now I'm gonna sew straight until I hit the circle. And even here, you can probably go ahead and just sew straight without any ruler, because it's only about three stitches. But now we have this cool echo on the inside and the outside. It's got some breaks in it. I don't care. I think that it's going to add a lot of drama to this design. So I'm going with it. You could just sew the square if you wanted to. 
right, this inner square. You don't have to do all these curvy arcs, but we're just trying to make it look pretty, as, as fun as we can. Once we get back to this position, I'm gonna scoot this template out. Where are we again? We're in the same position now to use this. I don't have the key taped, so I don't have a big drama about getting it on and off. I'm just gonna set the key in there to use the alignment, okay? Just like we talked about. So I'm gonna take, I think, one stitch here to get lined up and get my little pinhole right where I want it. I'm gonna travel up the circle, just one stitch I think is all I'll need in order to push this up just enough to get the line and the pinhole to line up. And I'm right on the center position here. So now let's go ahead and sew. Nice and easy around the ground leaf. Try not to rush this one because I think those inner corners when you have to go along the outside of a curve, they're just a little bit trickier. Take that one stitch to get onto your line. Then you can take this off. And now you're back on that three inch box right there. And now we can travel out just until the edge of the foot is touching the circle. That is our goal. Right there, the foot is touching now. And we can use that same back to back and we can continue putting that echo in there. Okay, so sewing around it's got that beautiful half inch spacing the foot is still touching all the way around stopping at the chalk line and adjust the template and we're going to sew until we hit that box right there okay there's the line of the box right there and our foot is still touching and now we'll just sew straight across until we touch that circle again And this time I'll leave it like this so you can see the pinhole alignment back here. Put this on and set the key in place and the pin is right there. And I'm just going to move this up. If I cannot quite get aligned, what I want to do is sew up the circle just a stitch or two at a time up. Okay, just like that. It's only a very small amount that I have to shift at, if at all. It's lined right up on the reference line. You can see right there, it's aligned and I'm aligned right there. So again, this is going 360. We're starting in one spot and we're gonna go around here. So I'm gonna use four points of pressure. I'm activating the grips up here and kind of activating here. I need to maybe move my hand up just a little bit here to choke up and make sure that those stable tapes are activated. coming around that circle nice and slow and back until my needle is in the circle right there. Then I can just pop this off, no tape required, and I can finish these last two. So we've got three of them done. We'll continue sewing around. Make sure you start on the chalk line right here, okay? So if you need one stitch or so to cross out and then get yourself right against the circle We'll line this up right on that plus, right in the center of the circle. That center line, that two inch box is marking the center of the circle and we'll sew around. Okay, stopping right on the chalk line and then rotating to get us a little further around. Going right to the three chalk line right there. Okay, I'm right there and I'll sew straight across and get to the circle. Okay, now I'm ready to put that last one on. You can see it from this angle. I'll put it on, I don't need to rotate. Put the key in and I'm gonna try to line up the pin right on that reference line. This one right here, right where those circles intersect and aligning the top right on the center right there. So notice that the foot really isn't even touching it right there. And what I'm gonna do is I'll travel up the circle until this side of the foot is touching. I'm not gonna try to go into that dip right there. I'm just gonna start the design, which was only one stitch, 
Okay, dip around these curvy craziness here, up to the top, change directions, and coming back around that circle. See how that outside curve is really, really dip? You really gotta go a little slow and hug that curve right there. Take this off. We're almost right on that reference line right there. We might need maybe one stitch on the circle in order to get aligned with this line because I wanna travel straight out on that line at a quarter inch right there until the foot is touching. That's gonna make all the other sides look the same, which is what we really want. So let me just check. Yeah, we're perfect. I'll turn it this way so you can see this last connection here between this circle and closing the design right there. At this point, I'm done with my grand leaf, so I do wanna put the key back in and put the tape back on. So I have my little pull tab, my little folded corner that doesn't stick, and I just wanna make sure that those keys are not lost so I can put that away now. All right, we'll align that right on the center of the circle. The little plus will align right there. The foot should be touching, and we'll sew around until we get to the chalk line, which means we have to sew by adjusting the ruler twice. There's our first adjustment, and then I'll just rotate that, get it aligned again right on the plus, and just sew those additional stitches. That's gonna keep the curve as pretty and clean as we can make it, and then we'll sew right over to the circle where we left off. I'm gonna tack stitch right now where there's already a little bit of extra stitching towards the center, and we'll close the design. When I'm done, I raise my needle up and my foot, and I'm gonna pull this out about six inches, okay? I want a, a little space so that the bobbin is now as long as that. Let's pick this up. Needle down and up allows us to pick up our bobbin thread right there. That way, this has been tacked off with some very tiny stitching that was already right in the circle, invisible, and now we can cut the bobbin thread and the top thread, and everything is clean and tied off. Okay, I'll pull it up just a little bit so we can get some great shadow on there. Doesn't that look cool? Let's see if we can change our light a little bit. Woo, love it. I think it looks so awesome. And of course, if you wanted to put something in those little circles, you could, you can do lots of different things. Let's go ahead and add in just a little bit more development real quickly. Right here, this is what we talked about, that there is a quarter inch between the tip right there of the design, okay, right here, and our six inch box. This is about a five and a half when it's gonna sew out. So my stitch will be basically right in the middle of this half inch space right there. The way that I lined mine up is if I put the ruler I see how much of a straight line can I get. Notice that I'm pretty much touching right at the circle and pretty much touching right at the tip. So this is very, very close to a straight linear line between the points right there. So I don't need to do a lot of excess work in order to line this up. If I line it up at the point with the ruler touching, it's gonna sew a quarter inch away from that point. So I don't want to start right on this line. I want to start on this line so I could connect everything later if I need to. So I'll line it up that way. I think it's a little smoother to not have your connections be right at the corners of a square where it's really visible and people are going to just have their eye go right to it. So this way, we can connect it a little bit more invisibly. Okay, so align it. Let me show you one more thing I wanna do. Uh, let's flip this around. Notice that this ruler has a 45 degree angle right there. I will have to sell the ones without puzzle keys. <laughs> Jenna, I'm not sure what that means. I, I do use the puzzle keys. I just didn't need it right then. 
And I would certainly want the key because it allowed me to align the design. So I, I'm not sure what the challenge is there, but I, I think the puzzle keys are good. Sometimes there's channels. They've kind of gone to some of the channels instead of a key for some of the templates. But I, I have to tell you, I actually like the key, my personal preference. I think it makes the circle design really smooth, better than having a, an open channel. And that's just personal preference. Okay, so we want to line this up and create a 45 degree angle line. Notice that if I put one of these straight edges on here, I may not be able to get both of them. I can't necessarily align them right on the center because it's so far away, but I want to use at least one of them as a reference. So notice that I can use this one and then down here, I'm looking to see that this line is parallel to this line that is marked, the chalk line. And that's going to help me have a much cleaner line for this whole process and make sure that my resulting box is more square. All right, needle down. Let's get sewing. Here we go. We're stopping on the chalk line and it's a quarter inch above that grand leaf design right there. So stopping on the chalk line and I'm just going to rotate this. We'll do the same alignment again. I have this center line that I can use in the midline. I can see that we're aligned right at the point of that little grand leaf. Let me scoot down the camera so you can see it. Okay, give me just one sec. I'll make that adjustment for you. All right, just a moment. too many adjustments. This line, this chalk line, this straight line that goes right here through the template is aligned right on that line, squaring up our line. And I'm right at the bottom of this grand leaf. I'm aligned with the ruler right at the tip. It's going to sew then a quarter inch away from that. So here we go. Stopping right on the chalk line right there. Okay, same thing. I can just rotate this. I'll use that same center chalk line and then just make sure I'm aligned right at the tip of the leaf right out on this side. So this line is on that straight center line and here we're lined up right on the grand leaf. Right there. Here we go. So I'm sewing to the chalk line each time. Right there's the chalk line. And then again, let me show you this alignment one last time. I'm rotating this. There is that alignment right there. There is a marked line on the template that is a 45 degree angle right there. So I'm going to use that line and align it right there on that center line, just like that. And then on the back right here, I'm going to check that this is just touching right at the grand leaf. And that way, we'll have a nice box enclosing our design. It's not too tight, it's a quarter inch away, but it's gonna look very pretty and it's gonna really set off our design. You can see the little bit of spacing that we have right here. We're not trying to make it super tight. This box will end up being five and a half. Um, the original box, Norma, is an eight inch square. So the original chalk line that is out here is eight. Could it be smaller? Of course, it, it's five and a half right now. This is five and a half. If we echoed it, that would make it six. If we filled in all of this space, we could just have whatever size box we want. We're gonna actually put a little border design right in this space, okay? All right, so the last piece is we still now wanna use that same straight line right there and that is going to help us connect the dots right here and get right into this quarter inch so that we're perfectly lined up with our existing line. Okay, and then we'll put a few tacking stitches right there, nice and slow, lift up the needle and the foot, and we'll pull this out and pick up that bobbin thread. Okay, so it's all secured at this point. 
Now, if you just wanted to be done here, that's already a lot of quilting. So here's a question for you. People are going to say, can I, am I going to do this? Am I going to go through all of this work for just one block? I think you guys know me well enough to know that I'm going to say yes, because <laughs> I want it to look how I want it to look, right? I'm definitely going to be willing to do this. But all this reference really took at the beginning was just my two inch square right in the center, right? So if you have a pieced block, you just need to mark your two inch in the center and you can start filling it in from there. So if I had, you know, 20 of these, would I make these four patch circles? Yes, I certainly would. And having that two inch marking right in the center makes it very quick and easy to get those four circles done. Then the other embellishments can be up to you if you want to. You can just quickly put these four corners in. You can leave this echo off if you want to. You can just sew the, the square inside to put more dimensionality instead of doing this. But it's up to you. Absolutely, it's up to you how much effort you want to put in. Some people want a lot. Some people just want it quilted quickly. All right. So this is measuring at the five and a half. And if I had a six inch box right here that was the six inch, um, I'm trying to say on point square, thank you, I couldn't think of it, then I could just ditch around my six inch and I'd be done, right? That would be finished. If I actually am using this design in the center of this eight inch box, I had a fun idea that would let me use this one and a half inch set and put a little frame in this space right there. So I'm gonna show you that and then we'll move forward. All right, let me grab some tools. There are two templates right here and they're matched up. They're all one and a half inch in terms of the distance of the circle, the curve from this side to this side, this is measuring at one and a half. It's two of these units and each one of these splits is three quarters, okay? So that's the same for both of these templates. I could use any that I wanted, but what I want is a little bit more of a gentle curve. I don't want really, really deep curves. So I have two options. I can use this one, which is kind of medium, and this one, which is more shallow. And I think I'll use this one. You can play with these templates and use them whichever way that you want. I do want to use a ruler sticker today, and that'll help you see what I am aligning when I'm doing this. Okay, so right here, we need to decide where is our curve going to hit the other side, right? If this is a square, I'm going to mark the center of this box. So from this position through the center of the circle, through the center of the circle, I'm going to make a plus. And I'll show you why it makes sense because it's going to help us to split this place in half so that the mirror happens right at the middle. So this to the diagonal will be the same, the diagonal to the middle will be the same and be a mirror image. And that's gonna help us put a really pretty frame. But again, that's another set of marking. Okay, let me get my straight ruler and I'll just show you quickly, we can use Donnell's ruler. Remember that these circles are in line with one another and they're in line with the center line. So I have three points of reference right away that I can use in order to mark the line. Make sure that your straight lines here align on the box too. That's gonna help you be more accurate. Okay, so we are right through the center, right through the center of the circle, and right in the middle there, okay? Maybe I'm a tiny bit off right there, but good enough, it's close enough. Okay, so let's do the other side. We'll try to get it as accurate as we can this time. Right there. And we're just trying to mark really this part of the frame. We're not, we don't need to mark through all of this because this is done, but we're trying to split this part, right? We want the middle of this section, this wedge, okay? 
All right, let's go ahead and get our ruler set up. So I've got some pink, let's use a different color. <laughs> Already got some pink on there. I guess I could take these off. I'm not going to, I don't want to ruin my nail polish. I got some fancy stuff coming up, so. I gotta keep them looking fancy. All right, let's put a green one. So for this design, we're using green. So this already has pink on there, ignore the pink. Let's just use green for this design. Now, I want the shallow side, so I want you to concentrate on this side the whole time. And what I'm looking for is I'm gonna audition from the inside this way, okay? Lining one of these straight lines here and looking at where it's gonna hit over there. So right now, this one would dip into the bottom. I don't want that. I, it's not gonna, it's so right to the box, but I don't want it to. I want a little gap, so I'm gonna push it up. So right there in this shallow dip, it's gonna sew a quarter inch away. So it won't sew into our box and it won't touch the box. So look at where we are on this miter. It's gonna be where it bows out. And I actually like that, but just for the purposes of education, if I scoot this over to another line, see how it's gonna come right after the wedge? This is the tallest part, it's gonna dip down. I don't prefer that. I'd like to have as much of the tallest portion as I can out here on this miter, okay? So just for that, I'm gonna stick my little green arrow right there and say, use this line to line this up. So I'm gonna sew out to the miter. When I get to the miter, I want to flip it over and use that same green line. So I'm gonna put the green arrow on that side too. That way there won't be any question about which mark that we're using. Right there. Okay, I think we're ready to sew. We'll start here. We're aligning on the center and we pushed this up such that this will not touch. Okay, so let me show you what that means. Here, I'm on the second line. Let's see if we can get a little more light on this real quick. Okay. Right there is the first line. And right where the pink is, that's the second line. I don't want this edge to dip below the boundary of that box. So this edge right here will align right on the box and the foot will sew a quarter inch away. So just to show you that alignment, here I go. I'm gonna put it right on there, pushing this up so that the edge of this and this line is right on the chalk line. It will not sew into that space. And I'm gonna sew that way to the miter line. To keep this design balanced, we're stopping on the center positions and on the miter line each time, because those are the places where we're adjusting the template in order to get that mirrored effect. All right, so if we have a box and we sew from the middle here, from this position to the miter line, okay, we'll stop right on the miter right there, the chalk line right there. I'm going to flip this over such that this green is in the same center position here, okay? And I should be able to do it really easily, actually. Let's see. Did I, did I flip it correctly? Let's check. I want this position like that. Right there, there we go. <laughs> it's right here on the hump. I was confused. I was trying to put it over here, but remember I put that arrow on there to remind me. So the arrow is what's aligning right here, this line. And then let's see, I think we need maybe one more stitch because we're not, there we go. All right. I'm gonna flip it around, it's not doing what I want. Okay, we should be able to get this aligned a little taller than it is right now. So let me see if I aligned it wrong over here. Hmm. 
go, right there. We should be able to get it aligned right on that same spot right there. So I'm just gonna shift it down just a little bit and it's exactly where we want it. It's not touching below the box. It's gonna sew a quarter inch and this line is aligned. I don't know why I had trouble visualizing it at first, but it is correctly lined up. Right to the center there. And now we'll flip it and we'll do the same thing. So. We want it up that second space. We're on that same line. This dip should be touching right on the line. And we'll try to get everybody aligned as best we can. So we're right on this center line and we should end up in the same place right here on the corner, just like we did on the other one, kind of on that top dip right there. And then we'll flip it around. So it's two alignments, so we'll kind of get ourselves to that same position here, right there. So he's aligned right where he needs to be, and this is aligned right on the green arrow right there. It's two spaces right there, and that's exactly what we want, so we're perfectly lined up. Okay, from this position, we're gonna mirror it so we can just flip it over. We're lining it up on those two spaces again. This little dip is right on the, on the line, but not dipping in. And the miter is gonna go just over that hump, just like it did on the last one. Sewing right to the miter line right there. Okay, and then we'll flip it over again. Okay. Got a couple loose threads right here. So here is our line. We're on the second line. So I'll get that aligned. And right here, the dip is perfectly lined up and the foot is touching. So it looks like we're perfectly lined up. The foot should touch right where you left off. You shouldn't have any need to move the foot. That'll be a sign that maybe things aren't lined up properly if you're not able to get the foot where you want it. This is our green. The green goes on that center, so we'll flip it over, line it up on that center line, and then make sure we're on the right reference line, right there, okay? Here we go. Sewing to this miter line, I'm gonna kind of flatten that out. It's got a little buckle there, okay? And then again, this green is going to the center always, so we'll line that up. And now this is where you wanna double check with your spacing gauge, if you have that. That way when I come back into this position, I can make sure I'm touching exactly where I want to. This little dip is aligned right on that box and I can see the lines underneath the stitch line and right there is my quarter inch. I'm just trying to look real carefully right here. And I'm gonna let this go, and I'm gonna put a few tacking stitches right there. Just to make sure we close that design. It, it is similar to the London Bell Curve. Hmm, yes it is. This one is a little bit more flexible in the sense that if it was a bigger curve and I needed to repeat this, then I could. Like if this was larger than just the width of this, this would allow me to just move over to the hook and continue this arc to fill a larger space. But yes, definitely looks very similar to that London Bell curve. You are right. All right, and we're tied off so we can cut those as well. And we've picked up that bobbin thread. So I'll kind of reposition this and show you what we've got. What do you think so far? Do you like that? I love curvy frames, Vani. I think they are fabulous. And I would say that I feel like there's enough room to put maybe uh, just a quarter inch echo on there because you have room here and you have just a little bit of room here to put a little echo in there, which will make this look very rich and like a three-dimensional aspect. So in order to do it, we'll just do a little bit of it. I won't do the whole thing. 
but you're doing the same thing. These curves are all matched up, right? This is that curve right there. If I lined it up right on it like this, you're getting that quarter inch right there. So for, from this position, I could maybe even start right on the miter. And then, you know, you may need to fudge a little bit because we did do some adjusting of the curve, but let's just put this quarter inch echo in here real quick. So we'll start, I think we'll start kind of in the middle right there. This is aligned right on the center there. Okay, that's gonna be our key alignment each time is to use that same position. And I'm gonna push this up so that it covers the stitching so that it's not just right up against it. And what that'll do is it's sort of a, a extra generous quarter inch, right? It's not just a quarter inch, it'll be slightly, slightly more. And that'll be just a frame of reference that I'll be using just to make that look a little bit more generous. Because we've did adjustments at each quadrant right here on this straight line, I'm gonna make sure that this part matches as well. So let's scoot this down a little bit. And let's make sure that these curves here match. If I need to do slight adjustment in order to get that, I'm going to. And the reason that that might happen is because those were the places where we made our adjustments each time. On the miter and in the middle, we kept moving the ruler. So it's not unusual that you might see a little bit of distortion and that's why we're realigning. So right here, as I line this up, I wanna put these curves just over the edge right there, right? I just want the stitching barely hidden and I want this lined up right on the center line. And that'll give us just a little bit of a generous spacing right there, but still sort of a quarter inch. You just don't really have a lot of room for more than that right now. We don't have enough room for a half inch for sure. So let's go ahead and get this aligned just a little bit right over the edge. Much easier to align it this way, right, than it was before, because we have the actual curve now to be our point of alignment. So just getting it kind of right over the edge. It's a little bit uneven, I can see. I actually think that I'm gonna like that even better because it's gonna undulate sort of a little bit in and out. And I'm fine with that, totally fine with it. In the middle, scoot this down and get everybody aligned and get right to that miter. Right there is the miter and we'll just finish it up. Okay, keep using those center lines as that reference that helps us get right over the edge and be able to line up each side independently. Ooh, it's like a roller coaster. These are my favorite. I love these back-to-backs. They have a lot of flexibility, a lot of creativity that can be done with them. Really enjoy them so much. It's very swoopy. All right, and then this will be our last one. And then again, when we do that last one, what is more important than anything else, right? We're aligned down here, but what's important right there is that quarter inch. So we're gonna be looking for that, looking inside the foot, trying to get that curve nicely smoothed out right there and put those tacking stitches in right in the existing stitch line. All right, get all these little loosey-goosey threads. I am throwing them in my trash, not on the floor, not everywhere. All right, well, that is our fabulous and fun block for the day. Right now, um, this line right here, that will go away. That's just a marked line. I think because you know the pen kind of makes a little bit of an indentation there, it looks like this kind of cuts across, but once we spray that, this will loosen up right in here and we'll get rid of all these marks. And what we'll really see is this fun center space right here and the echoes around here. And the echo here was kind of to help you 
bring these all to the same place and fill in these corners and now we've got this cool frame so at this point if this was your block you could go ahead and ditch your block which will give this little curvature right here a definition if you ditch this right here this then becomes a puff shape because this will hold it down right there and this would allow you to use I think that this would be really great right here on quarter square like if you had the center line right here if this was quarter square um, colors I think that would show up really well with this type of quilting design if this center piece was a six inch block and then you had something outside of it I think this would be really pretty and then this type of border can be done really in any size you as long as you're measuring from the center of the block to the miter the distance from here to here and from here to here is the same and that's why this frame works like that okay so my son did bring in my computer so I could try to follow along but it wasn't hooked up as well as I wanted it to be so I had trouble answering the comments I will go back uh, later this week and answer any questions or put any reference materials I'll also take a better photograph of this sample and I'll put it out on my Facebook page on fabricated quilts if you need that as a reference and remember that this inner box right here is five and a half the base design box was eight inches and they're both set on point in terms of designing um, so so steady is not going to put out notifications I think for my Sunday classes for the next bit because I'm going to be traveling so so often and so what I will try to do is I will try to put out my own notifications but it's really a crapshoot I'm going to be traveling a lot in the next few months especially all the way through March so I encourage you to go to fabricatedquilts.com and check my calendar. I will try to keep the calendar updated of when I'll be home and when I would expect that I will be doing my Facebook uh, Live. And anything that I put out, I'll try to put it out to YouTube afterwards so that people can find it easily as the most recent publication. All right, well, it is um, the end for today. A little bit short, I guess, uh, on time. It's about 4.15, but I think this is a good stopping point, and I hope you'll enjoy that. Realize that you can put different elements in here. You don't have to choose exactly this, but you can use that same concept, and basically any spin effects could be your fill element here. You could use a bigger circle to make a bigger box. You know, it's your choice. The box here, the two inch, was based on the fact that the center of the circle, it's one inch to the line, to the midline, and one inch. So for example, if I'm using a three inch center circle, then my box needs to be bigger than that. This is a two inch circle and a two inch box. So if I have a three inch circle, my center circle, my center square would have to be three inches because it would be one and a half inches to the center of that circle. So transitional math is definitely possible with this, but you can definitely adapt this to fit the blocks that you want to fit. Have a great day, you guys. Happy quilting, and I will see you next time.